Is it dandruff or is it just a dry scalp? How do you tell the difference? That's what we're gonna cover in today's video. If you've got an itchy scalp with flakes, you're probably wondering, what kind of shampoo should I even buy? Should I buy a dandruff shampoo or should I buy this moisturizing shampoo? Should I use both of them and switch them up? It can be a really confusing territory to navigate. Dry scalp is quite different from dandruff. A dry scalp is due to the skin on the scalp's inability to retain moisture, a tendency to lose water from the skin and for more irritating things to penetrate. And there are a variety of reasons why this might happen. Whereas with dandruff, you have a problem with the turnover of the skin barrier, and you also have an overgrowth of the yeast malassezia. What ends up happening with dandruff is that the skin cells, instead of shedding, they sort of clump together. And when they shed, they shed as a large flake. You have that admixed with that little yeast malassezia that creates a lot of inflammation. And then you also have excessive oiliness. But the flakes of dandruff are much larger in comparison to the flakiness of a dry scalp. The flakes of dandruff and the scalp of dandruff is often a lot oilier in comparison to that of a dry scalp. Dryness of the scalp has something to do with a problem with the skin barrier. Maybe because you have atopic dermatitis, a common name for that is eczema, or you may have developed a contact dermatitis to something that is coming in contact with the skin of the scalp. That might be a hair care product that has an ingredient that you have become allergic to, or it might be a particular styling product that is just super drying and irritating to your scalp. It may not be your hair dye. Maybe you have insulted your skin barrier by getting a sunburn, or maybe it's just a seasonal thing. Just like dry skin is a lot more common in the winter because the humidity drops, same thing can affect your scalp. Maybe you've dried your scalp out by being overzealous with the blow dryer or using a high heat setting with any type of heat styling tool, but the blow dryer in particular is a notorious culprit. Dandruff also has a tendency to flare in the winter time for reasons that were not clear, perhaps because you get more run down and dandruff can get worse. If you get sick, you get run down, you get a cold, you get a flu. A lot of people tend to wear hats more in the winter time. Wearing a hat nonstop creates a more favorable environment for that little yeast to thrive. If you're constantly wearing a hat or head covering, that definitely can aggravate dandruff. If you're not certain what you're dealing with, definitely see a board certified dermatologist, especially if things are getting out of hand. If you have an underlying primary skin condition, well, treating that's gonna be key to getting the dry scalp under control. And dandruff itself can sometimes warrant prescription treatments, interventions to help control it better than things that you can do just yourself and over-the-counter remedies. How do you manage a dry scalp? You gotta figure out what exactly the cause is. If it's an allergy, you need to deduce what that ingredient is so that you can avoid it moving forward to prevent flares of dryness on your scalp as well as dermatitis elsewhere. Consider the temperature of the water that you are using to shampoo your hair. If you are one of those like myself that loves hot water, uh, it certainly can dry out the scalp even further. Consider a milder shampoo, a moisturizing shampoo, or a shampoo marketed for babies or an eczema-friendly shampoo. For example, Eucerin makes a uh, eczema body wash and shampoo. As a side note, YouTube has this new feature now where the products that I mentioned, they can appear on the side of the video. All you have to do if you wanna learn more about them is click on the little bag icon. Take a look at your hair styling products. If they have a lot of alcohol in them, that can dry out your scalp. Common culprits include styling gels, mousses, things that are intended to impart a long lasting hold. They often have a high amount of alcohol, which can be drying for the skin of the scalp. Take a break from heat styling, especially the blow dryer. If you do need to use a blow dryer, use it on the lowest heat setting and a key to not only helping with the dryness of the scalp, but also helping to reduce heat damage to your hair is make sure that you are moving it around in a continuous fashion. You're not holding it for a prolonged period of time on any one particular area of the hair, let alone the scalp. Try and avoid getting that, that heat directly to the scalp. Get a humidifier. I, you know, I, This is a tip I'm going to always give to you guys whenever we're talking about dry skin because it certainly can help. At nighttime, our skin, including the skin of our scalp, is more likely to lose water. Symptoms of itch tend to get worse at night because of this. Having that humidifier in the bedroom, it really can reduce the water loss from the skin and help ultimately. Of course, be sure and protect your scalp from the sun by wearing a hat. Uh, and they do make sunscreens for the scalp as well, but you know, just moving forward, being mindful that you're not getting a sunburn on your scalp in the future, a hat is a great way to protect it. 
Now on the flip side with seborrheic dermatitis, aka dandruff, there are some things that you wanna tweak that are different than a dry scalp. Uh, a hat actually can worsen seborrheic dermatitis. So not to say that you can't wear a hat, just make sure that you are not wearing it, you know, round the clock, that you're giving your scalp a little bit of breathing room, because again, that warm, moist environment underneath the hat is a very favorable environment for malassezia to kind of thrive. Drive those inflammatory mediators that further aggravate the clumping up of the cells and the retention, and then you have those big flakes, itch, inflammation. Because dandruff is an oily scalp condition, a big part of managing it is actually to increase the frequency with which you shampoo. As opposed to a dry scalp, you may be overdoing it with a shampoo. With um, seborrheic dermatitis, increasing the number of days a week that you shampoo your hair is key. Uh, specifically directing the shampoo lather to the scalp, not necessarily to the strands, uh, helps remove that, that oily buildup and helps those skin cells that are kind of stuck flake off and just allows for better scalp health. How frequently? It depends on your hair type. Some hair types are just not gonna tolerate shampooing the scalp every single day. Try and avoid uh, the triggers of stress, which is just, I don't know, it's a very frustrating recommendation to give and or receive. It's like, have you lived in our world at all? At all. But building in habits that help manage stress, it's really important for just everyone in general. For me personally, exercise is a big component of that. It releases endorphins um, and really does help with stress management. It's good for your health. Also making sure that you get good quality sleep, that you're not um, go running on empty, making sure that you have a balanced diet with lots of nutritious foods, fruits and vegetables, healthy fats, things to keep you from getting run down. Wash your hands so you don't get sick. Uh, don't underestimate the power of hand hygiene as a side note for preventing the transmission of colds and flus. Cover your mouth. I mean, these sound like basic tips, but you just don't want to get sick or run down. As soon as you do, it definitely can flare the seborrheic dermatitis, aka dandruff. When it comes to dandruff, incorporate an anti-dandruff shampoo. These are different from regular shampoos in that they are medicated. They have active ingredients in them that can help treat dandruff. These ingredients include zinc pyrithione, which is anti-inflammatory, helps control that little yeast, and also helps in the turnover of those skin cells that kind of get clumped together. You also have salicylic acid shampoos. These help to control the clumping of the cells, and they're also anti-inflammatory. Nizerol shampoo, it has ketocon in it, which is an antifungal, and is also anti-inflammatory. So it controls that little yeast, and it also helps with the inflammation in the scalp. Then you have selenium sulfide, which is uh, what is found in Selsun Blue shampoo. This is anti-inflammatory and also helps with that, those sticky skin cells that lead to flakes. Coal tar shampoo, Neutrogena tea gel, that brown liquid, and it can certainly help calm down the inflammation and help with those sticky skin cells. It's very soothing. For many people, they find that the odor is off-putting. And these shampoo brushes can be really helpful for directing the shampoo who lather to your scalp. Um, I particularly like this one. This is what I use. It has these little soft nubbins that help sludge build up on the scalp. They can further aggravate dandruff, contribute to the formation of those clumps and stickiness. So this just helps not only distribute the anti-dandruff shampoo or your regular shampoo across your scalp, but it also gently, mildly provides some exfoliation. And personally, I find that using one of these I end up using less shampoo because just a tiny little drop, I'm able to get it all over my scalp and I don't waste it. As a side note, for those of you who have a dry scalp, this also might help you because it helps you to use less shampoo. So you're not using so much that you end up leaving behind perhaps a residue that can be irritating to the scalp. When you use too much shampoo, you might not rinse it out all the way. And so this is a tool that I use to be conservative with my shampoo use. How frequently should you use anti-dandruff shampoos? You can use them uh, a couple of times a week to manage the condition. In the midst of a flare, you might want to consider using it on a daily basis. And remember, the goal of the anti-dandruff shampoo, whichever one you choose, is to direct that lather to the scalp. It's not necessarily meant for washing the strands. Leave it on the scalp for a few minutes and then rinse it off. Which one is best? 
Um, there isn't a single best one. Some people get better results from one, but you certainly can mix it up, change it up, use one one night, another the next night to try different ingredients together. Maybe that might get you the best results. It sort of varies from person to person. Some people are fine just using zinc pyrithione. Others find that they get better results with uh, a combination of zinc pyrithione one night, salicylic acid another night, and therefore they, they have a couple of different ones in their armamentarium. It's not a one size fits all approach, but do know that if you've failed anti-dandruff shampoos, first take a look at how you use them. Did you direct the lather to the scalp and let it sit on there for a few minutes and then rinse it off? Um, did you stop using it and then the dandruff came back? Well, that's to be expected. In that case, make sure you're using it continuously on an at least one to two time a week basis for maintenance. And number three is, well, did you just use one ingredient? It might be worthwhile trying another ingredient or a combination of ingredients. If things get really flared up and you feel as though you can't control it with these over-the-counter strategies, maybe it is affecting the skin on your face as it often does, See a board certified dermatologist. There are prescription treatments that can be given to get it under control, and then you can be transitioned over to maintenance on the over the counter stuff. There are prescription shampoos, prescription anti inflammatories that certainly can help quite a bit. All right, you guys, so that is a dry scalp versus dandruff. I hope this video was helpful in pointing out how the underlying reasons for these issues are significantly different. The underlying Biology is very different and the treatment approach is incredibly different. There are other rarer conditions out there that can present with a dry flaky scalp outside of what we covered in today's video. Things like dermatomyositis, uh, certain lymphomas can present with scalp problems. If you still feel lost and things are really bad, definitely see a board certified dermatologist or your primary care doctor. And if needed, they can refer you to a dermatologist to get on the right path to, to getting better. Now, because we're heading into the winter months, dandruff can flare. On the end slate, I'm going to put my video talking about how to prevent flares of dandruff in the winter time. So check that out if you're somebody who is prone to dandruff. I give a lot of tips in that video, but if you guys enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.